Let's start with a flash overview. We're going to be analyzing how this process technology works and some diagrams and flash drums. So let's start first with the process technology. So as stated before, we will be talking about binary mixture. Let's say A, the more volatile component, meaning that it will evaporate faster or readily. And J, the less volatile component, which will not be evaporating that uh, easily as A. Though, doesn't mean that this is not volatile. Now, let us have the following diagram here. So we have a feed, F. We have the distillate, which will be D. This is pure vapor. We have the liquid, which will be B for bottoms. And we are going to have a Y, which will be the vapor mole fraction. And X, the liquid mole fraction, uh, depending on what we're talking about. For instance, XF will be the molar fraction of the sphere. Now, for uh, we're not going to use that much, this notation, which is F, the vapor fraction. So as you can imagine, if you have 70% of the mixture inside this small flow rate, which is in vapor phase, that will be F. F will be equal to 0 0.7. Meaning that if we have one mole, 0 0.7 moles are in vapor phase, 0 0.3 moles are in liquid phase. So we may have heaters, which modify temperatures, and we may have these valves, which decrease pressure. Okay, And this is the flash drum. Flash drum is essentially literally just a vessel or a tank. And what we try to do is to separate liquid and vapor. Now, this is very important, guys. We're going to assume this is a single stage, meaning that this is at a given temperature and pressure. And the flashing will occur, let's say, instantaneously, even though maybe it might not occur literally instantaneously. We're going to assume that this is uh, going to occur at a flash that's why the the name flash okay it's a continuous operation meaning because many people think or many of my students think okay we load it we separate it uh, or we let it separate and then we take out the liquid and we take the vapor away that will be a flashing operation but that by definition will be a batch uh operation because you are filling you're allowing time to be a constant we have a change with respect to time but in this specific case, we are literally sending feed and it is separating into two species here, the vapor and liquid. So this is a continuous operation. Now, another thing is perfectly mixed, meaning that the homogeneous species will be, let's say we have A and B, or let's say A and J to be more precise with the notation. Uh, we don't have gradients of concentration. They are all mixed perfectly. There will be no heat transfer in this specific case, meaning that there is no removal or addition of heat. So everything happens here before in the heat exchanger. So it will either cool or heat up. But in this drum, it, this is literally adiabatic, meaning there is no heat going in and outside. So maybe you might argue if you have it in a sunny place and it receives some sunlight, it increases in temperature, it's getting hot. Well, yes, there will be another application for that. But in this specific case, assume that there is no heat exchange. And of course, expect ideal behavior, meaning that Raoult's law, ideal gas law, and ideal solutions will be uh, the case. Okay, let's get more technical. The feed is preheated before entering the separator. This separator is technically the flash drum, but you can say separator. I don't like using separator because separator has a lot of meanings in the process uh, engineering industry. But yeah, for now, let's assume it's a separator. Then we can either heat or cool down. Typically, we will be heating because if we have this from a piping, this is most likely liquid. It's going to enter here. We're going to partially evaporate this. And then we're going to drop the pressure. Remember that also pressure drops favor gas formation. So what we want to do is that, favor vapor formation. Note that we are fixing the temperature and pressures before operating our separator. This implies that the vapor will be produced and will be controlled, and the residual liquid is going to be also in equilibrium. So that's very important, guys. Even though we're having vapor 
and liquid going down, they are at the same conditions of equilibrium. So this degraded advantage is that physically we know liquids go down and vapors tend to go up. So this is the power of this flash operation. Now inside the drum or separator, uh, we're going to have both phases, vapor and liquid. So ensure there is always two phases. The amount of vaporization will of course depend on the composition and amount of vapors and temperature and pressures. But the overall idea is that the more volatile material, which should be rich in A, because A is the most volatile, yet, as stated before, doesn't mean that J will not be present. We may have, let's say, 80%, 10% mixture. And the least volatiles will go as liquids. They will not be able to vaporize, so they will go down. You could say that this 10% A and 90% J. For the sake of simplicity, of course, these numbers will not always be the case. You will not have those beautiful numbers. You will have uh, randomly calculated numbers based on the volatility and exchange coefficients. Okay, so probably wondering where do we use these the most? We're actually in most chemical industries, but I will say that petroleum refineries are very known to have these type of operations because as you can imagine, of course, petroleum has no binary systems, but overall you can say that light gases will go up and our crude oil will go down. Many times we have natural gas mixed with our uh, crude oil. So what we do first is simply separate paper versus gases uh, versus liquids.